Hello and welcome back and that is right today we're talking about this. This is the Terramaster T9 500 Pro. It's their latest 9 bay 10 GPE i7 equipped NAS server desktop and kind of like a rack now but in the wrong direction. And in this video I'm going to give you five reasons why I really, really like this NAS. But toss the coin, other side, we've got to talk about five things about it that really get my goat. So let's not waste anyone's time, let's crack on with number one. Terramaster have been around a block a fair old while, not quite as long as the likes of Synology or QNAP, but they've, you know, done their time a little bit, and I'll say right now, this 9 bay is riddled in good ports. What do I mean by that? Well, we could look more at the front, at the front there, we've got nine individual SATA bay hard drive bays in there that support 2.5 inch media, again, I've already plopped in some drives inside, again, click and load trays, doesn't really matter, a whole ton of ventilation, we'll talk about that later on, but when I talk about the ports and connections, I really, really want to talk about what I like here, notwithstanding that at the beginning here, we've got a plethora of USB, all of which are 10 gig USBs, by the way. On top of that, we have got USB Type-A and Type-C. On top of that, we have got an HDMI 2.1 output there, which means uh, 4K at 60 frames per second, even some 8K at some lovely little output there, depending on the software you choose to use. More on that later on, but obviously, the big gun here are these two, two 10GBE ports there. Not only 10GBE ports, but copper 10GBE, which let's all be honest, let's say it together, that's the better one. I know SFP and fiber is great for distance, but when it comes to most video editors, and particularly Mac users as well, the majority of them love working with copper, and the idea that you can attach two 10GBE devices to this, and therefore enjoy two individual one gigabyte per second connections into this is lovely stuff. Again, a pile of USBs for additional storage that can also be used for expansion chassis as well. Remember, they have their very own range of expansion chassis, for example, such as the Hybrid D5 and D8 series, which allow you to have both hard drives and M.2 NVMEs connected via USB to this system as an expansion. There's even support of 2.5 and 5 gig adapters to those as well to increase your network bandwidth there. There's a whole lot to play with in terms of ports connectivity. And on top of all of that, internally, alongside the storage, you've got a couple of M.2 NVMe slots inside that are Gen 4 times 4 speed. That gives you a potential bandwidth for SSDs inside there at 6 gig, 7 gigs per second inside. More than enough to saturate every single one of those connections. What I'm saying is, in terms of port to connectivity here, we have got crazy connectivity inside and out. Next up, I want to talk about design. Let's connect this in here, the background, and power the device on. Um, this system not only arrives with those nine individual SATA bays there, we've got that fan kicking in there in the background. That is the loudest the fan will go. Let's bring the mic a little closer. And now the fan is going into idle, we'll talk a little bit more about it. Straight away, I'll say this system on the rear, if we carefully rotate it round because of the power cable, we can see three individual fans there mounted on the back. They can all be controlled very easily. There is ventilation on every single side of this chassis bar in the top of the device there. And in terms of ambient noise, it's actually not that bad. I've got this device populated right now with four 4TB four drives inside. So we have to at least reflect that this is an enterprise grade high capacity drive. So they're gonna make their own noise. But I went for the four TBs so we could focus exclusively on the ambient noise of the system. Because at four to six TB, the drives don't make enough noise to override the ambient noise of the system itself. And it's very low noise indeed. Also, in terms of deployment, you can deploy it on the side if you wish but keep in mind you will be covering some of that ventilation there ultimately this is a nice middle ground between desktop and rack mount and although it is arguable that a stacked tower design is less desirable these days with so many people going for the more compact desktop or the fully fledged one two three u rack mount i like the design on this system it doesn't feel cheap it feels rugged well put together and 
Accessing the internal panel is two screws and you're in. Talking of the Intel, we can talk about that processor. It's an Intel i7. It's the Intel 1255U. It's a 10 core processor, eight efficiency, two power core with integrated graphics. That's XE graphics at 1.45 gigahertz. There's a Gen 4 CPU as well with 20 lanes to play with. There's a lot you can do with that processor. In idle, it actually goes down as low as standby 15 watts but again you're never going to live within that remit realistically on this 9 bay it's never going to be that idle uh, the peak of that cpu is 55 watt tdp which is obviously noticeably higher but comparable to a lot of other server grade intel core processors in the market that cpu brings a lot of performance potential both inside and out on this system in terms of managing uh, SATA based SSDs if you choose to fully populate this with those or even standard class hard drives you're not going to be feeling any CPU or resource bottleneck to really eke the most out of your hard drive storage array there and once you factor in again the gen 4 times 4 no downgrade m.2s inside and all of that being channeled out that 10 gbe there on the rear it's a great little cpu choice and that's even when we forget to factor in that this supports up to 64 gig of memory non-ecc memory which i now annoy some of you some of you but it's still a great little processor inside what is a very compact but powerful system Next up, let's talk about the integrated software. This system arrives with TOS6. We've talked about it in other videos. That is their own NAS operating system. It's not as mature, arguably, as Synology DSM or QNAP's QTS platform. It runs on uh, BTRFS. It also supports a flexible RAID system, uh, comparable to that of Synology's hybrid RAID. You can mix and match the drives, which is great if you're going to partially populate and add more storage later. Support of write once, read many. Support of snapshots. Support of drive sharing, drive synchronization. You can take advantage of a myriad of different storage and uh, uh, data management tools that are included with it as well as support of numerous third-party apps as well there's even a synchronization tool that you can install on your client devices to synchronize your storage with the device and therefore never have to deal with the file folder manager that this system arrives with if you don't want to in the web browser but that said it's still a great little tool and whether you want to utilize this locally uh, via web browser or via smb or in numerous different file services or you want to access it remotely using their own relay services uh, at TerraMaster or using third-party ones like TauScale, all of that is possible. And then you factor in, if you want, that you can install a third-party OS. The operating system boots from a USB drive inside, which you can replace, if you choose, with a true NAS bootloader. Replace with the Unraid bootloader, which runs from the USB anyway, or at least in the memory. My point is that this system in terms of software, you can go with theirs or you can go with a third party which will not invalidate your hardware warranty and still have a great base storage solution for an alternative to the cloud today. This last point I know is going to cause contention, but I think it's reasonably priced. I really believe that. It's rocking out at between 14 and 1500 Nikka. It's going to be on sale every now and then. Most of the Terra Masters are. And I would say that Terra Master is perceived to be one of the more affordable options in the NAS market. But nevertheless, saying the word affordable next to the number 14 of 1500 Nikka isn't that great a sentence to hear. But hear me out. Try to find an 8 to 9 base solution in the market that arrives with 2 times 10 GBE ports, that arrives with a 10 core i7 12th generation processor inside, that arrives with M.2 NVMe slots, two of them, at Gen 4 times 4 that arrives with turnkey NAS software, that arrives with um, easy installation of Unraid or True NAS. Try to find that in the market right now in a pre-built solution, a pure turnkey solution and look at the prices you'll find. More than likely, you're looking at two and a half to three and a half thousand right now for a turnkey now solution. So yes, I'm not stupid, 40 to 1500 Nikka is a lot of money, but for what you are getting compared to other options in the market, I deem that reasonable. But all to hell with being reasonable. Let's be honest, there's not everything about this is going to be for everyone. Let's talk about the things about this that I don't like, and I'm going to get out get it out of the way very early doors for using the comments. Every one of the next five points completely undermines every one of the positive comments I have already made, but within a certain perspective. But let's it's enough of the dilly dally. Let's crack on with number one.
As much as I wax lyrical about the ports and connections on this, I'll say right now, the lack of USB 4 on this really bums me out in a modern NAS. What do I mean by that? Well, on the one hand, it's great to have four different ports at 10 gig USB in order to share them out towards different devices. I'm not disputing that. But USB 4 on this as an alternative, whether it is that you remove the couple of those ports perhaps and add a USB 4 port at just 20 gigabits uh, limitation on a downgrade, would be very useful. The same hardware inside this, again, a slightly older generation CPU in the 1235U that we've seen in other devices, arrive with USB 4 on their NASes and one or two 10 gig USBs. USB 4, notwithstanding being four times the bandwidth of the USBs that are on this, also opens the door to Thunderbolt connectivity, also opens the door for network connectivity. You can directly attach the Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 device to a number of USB 4 NAS devices, which would open up another connection alongside those other 10 gigs. That would allow for another editor to access. So I'm aware that the majority of users are probably going to prefer to have multiple 10 gig USBs, but I do think it's worth touching on that if you are someone that's going to edit on this from multiple users at once, you're probably going to miss having another input for another editor. Power consumption on this device is not as good as I would have liked. I already mentioned earlier on that the CPU, although it has a base level idle of 15 watt and you're never going to get that on this, and a 55 watt TDP at peak for the CPU at least, I will say that even with four domestic class hard drives inside, 4TB Seagate Ironwolf standards, and not even fully populated, the power consumption was not ideal in my eyes. It was 61 to 63 watts with those four drives in idle. I wasn't accessing them, they weren't in hibernation, but the system System was just ready and it was still 61 to 63 watts with just four drives inside and with those same four drives with active read and write operations on board nothing happening with SSDs it went up to 81 to 83 watts that means this system's going to be pretty power hungry with all nine bays and the M.2s going full bells whistle so keep that in mind this is a system stylized like a rack mount device and unfortunately has the power consumption to match Again, this is nitpicking, but there's newer CPUs in the market right now. I'm not talking about desktop gamer Ryzen madhouse ones. I'm talking about server class CPUs. And there are other 13th generation Intel processors in the market. And given this is being released at the tail end of 2024... I know it is a newer generation of the i7 compared to everyone else that is running on the 1235U, but I really thought this would rock out with an Intel 13th Gen. I know I am nitpicking, but it has to be said that there are newer class CPUs in the market right now being using some NAS machines. And this 10-core, more efficient class i7, I'm not going to say is aged, but I am going to say that if you are focusing on pure power under the bonnet, there are better options out there. This is something I've mentioned in other videos, but the TOS 6 software still feels a little unfinished. It's Even though it's not in beta anymore, TOS 6, it just, it feels inconsistent at times. And when I'm using the software, it still doesn't stack anywhere near as good as the likes of Synology DSM. It's a good, full-featured software, and fair play to Terramaster, they are doing a lot for a smaller company compared to the others out there. But I'm not going to say that that software stacks up against the likes of Synology DSM. The gap is closing, and the gap is closing against QNAP with their QTS and QUTS. But I'm not going to say it's closing by much. And TOS 6, if anything for me, I'm not completely in love with some of the design choices compared with that of TOS 5.1. Also, as I've mentioned in other videos... In terms of software, it's always good to be aware that they, alongside some other brands, were impacted by a ransomware attack a few years ago called Deadbolt. Again, they weren't the only ones. Acer Store, QNAP, ransomware happens, and it's about how you back up and how you set up your network. And they did a lot to counter that afterwards. Again, uh, disabling a lot of the admin stuff, solidifying a lot of the remote access stuff. Um, enabling right once read many, tightening a lot of the access privileges, integrating an isolation mode. They did a lot, but you have to be aware, and again, I mentioned in my other videos, it'll be a few years before I stop reminding people about it, because they have to be shown that they changed their ways. Oh, 
Returning to my point about reasonable pricing, it's worth highlighting that although I do think 1500 for this is a reasonable price, there is an even better priced item in the TerraMaster portfolio that if your storage needs aren't quite as high as this system, you could actually do a lot better to spend money on. That is the F4424 Max. Now that is a four bay desktop NAND solution. And again, remember, this is nine bays, but that little four bay rocking out at 699 to 799, it's coming close to half the price of this device, and although it only has four bays rather than all of these nine, that system also arrives with two 10G ports on the rear. It also arrives with a USB 10 gig. It also arrives with HDMI 2.1. It also arrives with two Gen 4 times 4 M.2 NVMe slots inside. Genuinely, the only differences I could find on that 10 core i5 system are that is that cpu isn't quite as peaked as this one and it doesn't have five more bays on it there so if your storage needs do not require nine bays or that your storage needs aren't going to require that level of internal expandability you may want to consider the f4424 max and save yourself several hundred dollars on the fly but there you go i do genuinely like this system and, and this is not their first nine base system and it won't be their last if you are looking for a no compromise storage and performance device from terra master this is it this is as good as it gets there is a 12 bay monstrosity version of this but i think this one nails the price versus power versus internal and external performance beautifully well but let me know what you guys think in the comments below there is a link to a written article over on nas compares in the description and links to get hold of this for yourself so if you have found this video helpful and if you were going to get hold of one of these via one of those listed retailers please use those links in the description it really helps me and eddie out here at nas compares it's just us doing what we do and every one of those uh, purchases gets a little commission to us and we just it just goes back into the machine thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time